this will be the continuation of the previous step because it got cut. So, when he said, I will clothe him in Isaiah chapter 50, uh, 22 in verse number 21, the simple thing what he clothes, it is nothing but to make up, all, make up you all to be disciple oriented. Your body, your thought process should be all the time disciple oriented. If it is not a disciple oriented, then your clothed is absolute vanity. So when he says in Ephesians chapter 4, in verse number 24, emphasizing the point, he teaches that he has clothed us with endikaiosune, kaihosetis, thesalatia. That is in the sphere of truth, giving on to take the standards of his righteousness to the ultimate purpose. And what is that righteousness and the standards of ultimate purpose? The logic is very simple, which is called to make you to be disciple. Your body should be disciple. Your thought process should be disciple. In everything you ought to be disciple to the Lord God. So dear brethren, what is it? Disciple. In everything be disciple. And at what we are looking today, no discipleship program. So clothing himself, when you have been believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the very first thing what he looks into you, he wants to clothe you to be the process of disciple to Christ. Therefore John 1 11 has his said. To them he gave the power to become the sons of God. The word sons called to be technon. What does it mean to say disciples? Technon of Lord God. And that's the very simple logic. Technon of Lord God. Called to say disciples of Lord God. By default you are born as a disciple to Lord God. Therefore you are being called to put his words in your mouth. As before the foundation of the world, as he says, you have been put, you have been chosen, you have been called to go and plant the teachings of the heaven. And they should be not just planted, but permanently fixed foundations on the earth. And being reasoned, they should come back to talk. As Isaiah chapter 43, verse number 9 emphasizes, let us reason, produce them, let them pull back. Isaiah 41, 31, what does it say there? Let them produce their cause, let them come and talk. And after talking, they will realize, yes, this is the truth, this is Christ, this is the way, this is the, this is the will of God the Father for every human being on the face of the earth. This is what they have to learn. not been able to look and realize the clothing of the Lord God. So he said, I will clothe him with my robe. What is the meaning of the robe? The word robe is called to be Kethonet, the strong code number 3801. And Kethonet is nothing but your brethren, as a grammatius having authority in your vigor and valor. So what is that card you're going to sign of authority as a scribe? Or as a grammar has grown up in the Lord God. It is not the garments what Adam and Eve they were when they sinned. It is the garments what we need to wear after putting upon that great cloth of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's salvation. The salvation clothes of His righteousness and His holiness in the sphere of truth. And what does we have to clothe? We have to clothe ourselves as a scribe, the new garments. And that's where we begin our life, new garments to Lord God. Having great authority, having great vigor and valor in each and everything, what you take as a great authority, having those garments for Lord God. And that's what we're finding today. No garments at all to be robed. How many scribes are there for us in Christ? How many people are fulfilling Matthew 13, 52? 
how many people are able to grow up to become Matthew 28 18 through 20 responsibility laid down upon their shoulders how many people they are really growing up in such way of life when Christ our Lord of God said not even a single iota and carrera I will not let go but I will fulfill each and everything then you people love to bifurcate this information you people love to put upon the deaf ears a dull of hearing And not able to be the disciples of the word of Lord God. Not able to be the will of Lord God. And the people simply love to spend the time searching vanity to be a reality. He clothes you with his robe in the sense he goes on to give you discipleship program. That is the entrance for your life. That is where you begin your true life in the Lord God. Having that entrance in your life, what you do now, you go on to become the will of Lord God the Father to the highest glory. That's what you have been called. Having that sense in your life that you have been called to be a disciple, you have been called to be a grammatist, you have been called to be in the process of becoming to be clothed. Because God rises when you have Him as your portion. Eliakim followed by the word Hilkiah. If Jehovah is your portion, He rises you. And if it's not your portion, He cannot rise you up because you're not able to give Him that which is due unto His glory, that which is for His work. So dear brethren, here he says, I have clothed him with robe, that is every believer should be in the process of becoming a grammatist joined as disciples to the Lord God. And I have strengthened him. What does he strengthen? He goes on to build up a wall of fortification in such a manner that every day you need to dig and take the word of Lord God. Every day. So strengthening is Kazakh, day by day, strengthening what your griddle, what is your griddle, the energy where you're going to flow through your lions, the thing pertaining to your waist or where you're going to be in the process of tying up the middle of the body as a division, that's where he begins, he clothes you up and then he goes to strengthen you, your lions, having no proper strength in your lions, you cannot go to procreate. So the lions over here, your body, bigger and balder in such thought process of the word of Lord God, your lions over here. So he says, I've strengthened your lions. And then he further continues to say, and I will commit thy government into his hand. I will establish and I will give your government. What is the dominion of the government? The Hebrew word is called to be Memshallah. And what is the meaning of the Memshallah? Thy rule. What is the dominion of the rule? Making up your blood in the thought process of becoming disciples of Christ. That's the only government. Second, he cross check and look. He talks about the government of becoming disciples. He cross checks the government of making your blood to have a thought process of going and making disciples of all the nations. So he said, I will give him, commit thy government into his hand. The people who are able to write the word of Lord God by getting every thought into captivity for Christ. And he shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. That is, he's like a mentor as a role model to teach them what it shall be. And to the house of Judah. And then he says, the key of the house of David I will lay upon his shoulder. Having to take such sort of a great responsibility. Because the word shoulder over here, it is nothing but you have already established a thought process like a scribe. Your blood talks about like a scribe. Your thinking is like to go and make disciples. That's what your shoulder blade is all about. So he gives upon his shoulder, so he shall open. The Hebrew word pata, that is, whenever he's opening up his mouth, will be in authority as a wall of fortification in Bible doctrine. That's what he opens up his mouth. So he shall open, and none shall shut it, because no pressure, 
nothing of a force so as simple words to say in isa 51 as it said no weapon that is formed against thee will ever prosper so it is the words again the meaning of the words again any pressure what you have been put any pressure what the people will try to erect like the way how daniel chapter 6 they talk about daniel saying that we cannot find fault him in anything except in the matter of his god so this 120 men of elderly rank or the great rank they just try to find an occasion and they, how they get upon to erect a scheme one month scheme a scheme where they would not go down to any god apart from the god which has been made in the image of that king so they say and the law has been passed and now daniel as usual he goes to pray three times a day kneeling down in the presence of lord god the father and now this man they're acting like sagir what they do they're erecting the structure and they're coming back to say come let's put pressure upon this man who has been there as daniel so what they're going to do now they're going to put pressure but what does lord god the father said such pressures will not work out because what I have opened no one can shut what has opened the ministry of lord god the father in our lives the ministry of making christ to be fully developed and complete to be present in the presence of lord god the father in everyone believer's life such ministry which has handed over to us we cannot let go for silly stupid things of this life so such ministry what has opened us opened up no one can shut it any pressure any heartache any trial any perversity any adversity anything when Lord of a God has opened no one can shut it no one except your ignorance will show the quality of that has been distorted as you find many things in the market to find for your quality people would say compromising quality you can take such and such things such will be your life because has opened up the gates but no one can shut you think the thing of your shutting is nothing but since you haven't been able to produce the great character of Lord God shutting you will say you'll say Lord God has shut me the doors no he hasn't shut the doors your quality is deteriorated the expectancy of Lord's great value is being diminished so he says no one can shut Daniel didn't go to compromise for one month, saying that, Lord, this one month I'll be such a, such a moron. As usual, what was his work? He just went to do it. He just goes to do three times a day to pray. So the saga kind of man, they come and they try to shut off. But he said they cannot shut. And what he has shut, that is Sagar, no one can open the door. So he said, such are the men who have been clothed with, with thy robe. They have been strengthened with thy griddle, because he has committed his government into our hands. And he shall be a father of many people like the inhabitants of Jerusalem and the house of Judah. And the father goes to say, I'll fasten him as a nail in a sure place, and he shall be for a glorious throne to his father's house. The prayer of David being answered in First Chronicles 17, 25. And today, if your prayers have to be answered, to be surely making up a glorious throne for you, simply take up your cross and follow. Day by day, grow up into the standards of his thinking. Day by day to learn to do his will. And day by day if you're having such sort of a great reality in the standards of the word of Lord God, you really will enjoy a great life. Dear brethren, what is that one thing you desire of the Lord God and but that one thing which you love to seek after Lord God? As we read that word in Psalms chapter 27, in verse number 4, Thing which you're going to desire it has to be to dwell in the house of Lord God all the days of your life to behold the word called again as Kozak and what is the meaning of Kozak to dig and take every details of the Lord's word to behold the beauty of the Lord God what is the name of the word beauty is called to be Noam the strong code number five to seven eight 
and what is the meaning of that noam she is beautiful she is delightful she is pleasantful and she is the one who is called to be like a splendor or a grace so what delight you're going to have the delight what you can look it emphasizes to the standards saying my vigor and valor or every view part of thought will be associated in the standards of your blood on this earth every view point so that's what it meant to say to be delighted so he says i have to look to dwell all the days of my life in your house to behold the beauty of the lord god and to enquire this is what today people are failing the word enquire is called to be bakar what is the meaning to open up your mouth from the rising of the sun till the going of the sun to have a view point like the thinking of christ that's what you search something to find the answer so he says to enquire in his temple what is the meaning of the word temple which is called to be hekal over here and the word hekal for the strong code number 1964 which meant to say sanctuary or the things what we are right now to be the lord god's temple because the things pertaining to the old testament temple or the millennial temple it has gone it is yet to come heavenly temple which is yet to come but now what you are he says in first corinthians 316 or 619 you are the temple of the living lord of a god and that temple is nothing but if you are not a scribe and if you are not growing up you mean to going and making disciples of all the nations then you are not at all the temple of the lord my god that's what it meant to say where you enquire in the temple of the lord god you enquire to find the will of lord god you enquire to look upon the pale wonders of his glory in the will of lord god that's what you do so what is your desire it has to be established like paul or it is a desire to let go like peter before the cock could crow or having a desire like mary magdalena to carry the world and our desire would be first kings 1830 to say lord your pulpits are broken up and you want to establish your pulpits not only on the earth you meant to shake the earth as well God the Father would say in 1 John 5:15 and 16 doing his will everything will be sanctioned your petitions will be given a great hearing and a great result of your prayers provided when you're not shaking to fulfill his mandates to do his will to perform his glory day by day and the dear brethren how many days more the life that you're living is not at all worth it you're called to be before the foundation of the world to be the lord's glory on this earth if christ our lord our god pays the 100 foreskins demanded by saul like for david and david bought 200 foreskins that the remaining poor and forced kings the pale wonders of his glory the great wonders of his word it is what right now we we pay what we pay through the church as psalms chapter 22 verse 25 teaches to us it is what now we pay through the church and yet if you're still not interested to know what is the true value of life you are seeking pleasures in garden of eden you are searching out your delights as i said in psalms in ezekiel chapter 31 as the people they are seeking out the things pertaining to the delight in this garden called to be eden and then they are searching out to find in the lebanon the word eden it is nothing but a problem meant to say pleasure what is that pleasure the pleasure what these people are looking in the viewpoint of this life by considering to take solution for every thought what they get the solution for living more on this earth but not looking a solution for eternal status in the heavenly so he says the things pertaining to eden and lebanon lebanon to be white in the sense to make up your body as disciples to make up your vigor and valor as disciples so he said 
all that drink water shall be comforted in the nether parts of the earth. They also went down into hell with which, with him unto them that be slain with the sword, and they that were his arm, they dwelt under his shadow. The word shadow is nothing but always giving you the pressure to go and make disciples. Where? In the midst of the heathen. So how they are going to dwell? They have to increase the thought process like the word of Lord God. And they have to be to look and to understand like the shadow. You know, you know very well, wherever you go, your shadow follows you. So the shadow is nothing but putting pressure upon your head to become disciple for Christ. And whenever you look the next time of a shadow, are you in the search of false Eden, of call to be the Lebanon of Eden, a white Eden, or you're really having a great pleasure in the true garden of Eden before the fall of man. And the true garden of Eden is nothing but the word of God. And then, dear brethren, if you don't have that petition to be fulfilled, the desire to know, the desire to become, the desire to perform, that we shall be the will of Lord God the Father forever. Then, dear brother, your life has no meaning at all. So, dear brother, think over these issues. We cannot be the people who are daubing with untempered mortar, but we are to be the people where the word of Lord God has been thought effective. And yet many false men have entered into the pulpits not knowing the will of Lord God the Father. They are making you all to be strangers and foreigners. But they're not making you all to be the fellow citizens in Christ. Thus, they're not at all worried. To say unto you, taste not, touch not, handle not the things of the world. But since you're born again in Christ, be faithful till the end so that you can get your crown of glory. The thing which you have done in this life to the praise of your will in this church church. <laughs> so dear brethren, think about these issues. Life is too short, and the responsibility laid on upon our shoulders is too large. So, which way you want to go, you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God the Holy Spirit leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious place. So, with our head bowed, eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those of without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In our will, to Lord God the Father, the privacy of your soul, that you believe in Christ, my Lord, my Lord, my Savior. That's the moment itself. We shall have the eternal truth. This eternal truth falls for very simple. Believe in Christ, we shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, <coughs> the greatest merit is to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, so that you shall learn to know the truth. The truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, <coughs> the greatest merit is to care so the God. Hear all the word in season out of sin, because the diamond of witnesses where they have been called. The number one diamond from my witnesses in the infinity, for the Bible in our hands. And number two diamond from my witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, and not worry, besides nature, the entire and of are witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God, the Holy Spirit, leadeth us to the praise of His glory, in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, and glorious grace. Infinitely divine, Holy Father, being thankful for His privilege, O Lord, to redeem the time and the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to know the truth and to learn the truth and to be stabilized in the truth. Because, O Lord, the great privilege what I have given for us is to clothe ourselves in the robe, in the signs of growing up into gravity as joined as disciples. So, Lord, let it your name be established. The establishment process which are going to make for every believer is to make them to be gravitas, to be in the presence. So, Lord, help us to do thy will according to the glory and search us diligently and see if there is an offense to us, O Lord. Lead us in the way of everlasting truth to the praise of your glory and match for us marvelous and kind of divine and glorious. Yes. In Christ, much less pure, less precious, and be prayer, Father. May Lord God, the Holy Ghost, enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ, we ask so little, Lord.